Did you know that the constellations were originally named by the Mesopotamians? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the history of astronomy in the ancient world. This video was kindly sponsored by History Hit, a company that brings you the stories that shaped the world through their award-winning podcast network and online history channel. It's like Netflix, but for history. With over 500 documentaries, 1,000 plus podcast episodes, and 5,000 history-related travel articles, History Hit are adding new programs and podcasts each week. If this all sounds pretty great, then be sure to visit historyhit.com and use our code WORLDHISTORY to get 50% off your first three months. And as always, you can always support us by joining our Patreon, which you can find a link for down below. It is generally agreed that the discipline of astronomy began in the region of Mesopotamia, although there are scholars who argue it originated in Egypt and others for ancient India. In Mesopotamia, it is thought that the Sumerians developed astronomy with their invention of the sexagesimal system, which is where 60 is the base number, which was then applied to calculating the hours of night and day. This investigation then developed into inquiries about the movements of the stars and planets. The Sumerians charted the night sky in a 360 degree circle. They observed the movement of celestial bodies and used mathematical equations to predict when these would turn up in a certain region of the sky. And they also named the constellations, which were later renamed by the Greeks. The inventions and innovations of the Sumerians were adopted by other Mesopotamian cultures by the 7th century BCE, and Babylon became famous for its astronomers and astrologers. Over 5,000 years later, we still use some of the Sumerians' definitions today, such as 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours per day, also a multiple of six, as well as the 360 degree circle that I already mentioned. Now that's a lasting impact. The evidence of Nabta Playa, a stone circle in Egypt which dates to the 5th millennium BCE and has been interpreted as a prehistoric astronomical calendar, is a main cause for the belief that the Egyptians were the first astronomers. It's definitely a bit of a who was first debate between Egypt, Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley civilization over who can claim to have been the region with the first astronomers. The ancient Egyptians had also developed a 360 degree circle chart of the night sky by the first intermediate period between 2181 and 2040 BCE. And the ancient Egyptians' astronomical knowledge can be attested by the alignment of the pyramids of Giza, as well as temples and obelisks, and their ability to predict the annual flooding of the Nile. The Indus Valley Civilization, while certainly a strong contender for first, was only discovered in the 19th century, and many artifacts and structures are yet to be fully understood, while also its language and symbols remain undeciphered, so it's unclear so far when they began charting the heavens. The study of how the universe functioned and why, setting aside theistic beliefs concerning gods and creation, and instead relying on mathematical calculations and observations, was certainly not invented by the Greeks, as they were latecomers to the field of astronomy, drawing on the works of the Egyptians and the Babylonians. To understand the universe and the Earth's place in it, they developed a working model of the universe, explained not by the gods, but by natural laws. Plus, by understanding how the planets moved, the concept of astrology and the idea of planets influencing human affairs transformed into a more scientific view of how planetary movement influenced human affairs. As the planets moved closer and further away from the Earth, they were believed to have exerted a certain power over both humans and the natural world. 
In the 8th century BCE, the Greek writers Hesiod and Homer were both composing tales that will last for thousands of years. And in these stories, they write about planets in relation to the universe as maintained by the gods, as well as mentioning stars and constellations like the Pleiades and Orion, which still have the same name 3000 years later. Their mention of astronomy concerns the telling of time based on the stars in the sky, as well as the link between stars and celestial movements and the seasons. In Hesiod's Works and Days, he suggests that when the Pleiades born of Atlas rise before the sun, begin reaping, the ploughing when they set. Or if you want to know when the best time might be to cut off the grape clusters, Hesiod determines it is when Orion and Sirius come into mid-heaven and rose-fingered dawn meets Arcturus. Since atheism was considered a capital offence by the Greeks, Greek thinkers beginning with Thales of Miletus, who lived circa 585 BCE, carefully avoided any outright rejection of religious belief. Thales studied in Babylon and was influenced by both Babylonian and Egyptian astronomy, which was closely associated with religious belief. It is well documented by other writers that Thales successfully predicted the solar eclipse of May 28, 585 BCE, and though we only really have fragments of his beliefs cited by later writers, he does not seem to have denied the supernatural powers that religion associated with such events. He did, however, begin offering non-theistic explanations for the natural world and phenomena previously only explained by the divine, but in a way which could still fit into the theistic worldview. Thales is the first of the Greek thinkers known as the pre-Socratics, simply because they lived before Socrates of Athens, who tried to identify the first cause, the basic stuff that makes up the universe, and he was followed by Anaximander and Anaximenes, whose efforts contributed to the foundation for others, such as Pythagoras. Pythagoras, who lived between circa 571 and 497 BCE, developed a mathematical system to explain the movements of the planets, and so often is considered the first Greek astronomer. He is thought to be the first person to say the Earth is spherical, although it was known by the Babylonians and both Anaximenes and Parmenides suggested it before him. Pythagoras didn't write down his beliefs, but communicated them orally to a select few men, so it's hard to know if what we have is his original teachings. Pythagoras is credited with being the person to identify Venus as one single planet, not two, one appearing in the morning and one in the evening. And according to his follower Philolus of Croton, Pythagoras believed that the planets moved in set patterns according to mathematical principles of harmony and did not wander the sky as their Greek name, planetes, meaning wanderer, suggests. Pythagoras's astronomical work influenced Plato, who didn't agree with his concept of mathematical harmony as the reason for the movements of planets, but that they followed celestial tracks that encircled the Earth, and that the spherical Earth was encircled by the Sun, the Moon, the planets, and the stars. Plato's work inspired Eudoxus of Cnidus, a mathematician whose model of the universe informed the astronomical work of Aristotle, who tried to solve the problem that arose from Eudoxus's model, which was that if a planet consistently rotated in the same way in its own sphere, then why did planets sometimes appear closer and brighter to Earth than at others? Aristotle claimed that the planets were perfect spheres and moved around the Earth in a circular motion and at a constant speed, while the Earth remained still. Aristotle also thought that the Earth was smaller than the other planets, a claim that was challenged by Eratosthenes, who used the shadows of sundials in Alexandria and Syene to calculate the circumference of the Earth. His results were smaller than Aristotle's calculations, which encouraged the belief that the Earth was a small and immobile object, and that if the Earth moved, we would surely feel the motion, and so it must be still. Aristarchus of Samos challenged the idea of the Earth at the centre of the universe, and instead suggested a heliocentric understanding that the Sun was the centre of the solar system, around which all other planets gravitated. 
His theory was rejected because it contradicted what was considered common knowledge at the time, that the Earth was the center of the universe. Hipparchus of Nicaea, considered the greatest Greek astronomer, noted Aristarchus' claims but ultimately rejected the heliocentric model for this reason, that it just didn't fit with what authorities like Aristotle claimed. So if he rejected the Sun as the center of the solar system, then why is he still recognized as the greatest Greek astronomer? Well, because he not only invented trigonometry, but he also precisely predicted solar eclipses, created the first comprehensive star chart, and he charted the movements, sizes, and distances from the Earth to the Sun and the Moon using the celestial globe, a device of his own creation, and corrected Eratosthenes' conclusions on the size of the Earth. So yeah, he definitely added a lot to our understanding of the universe around us and would have been spot on if he could have only rejected the prevailing model of his day and recognized Aristarchus was right. Hipparchus's inventions, developments, and conclusions informed the work of Claudius Ptolemy, whose Almagest, a treatise on astronomy, became the foundation for work on the subject in his time and up through the period of Renaissance Europe. The foundational work of the Greeks informed Renaissance thinkers like Nicholas Copernicus, Brahe, and Kepler in their development of the heliocentric model of the universe, which was then proven true by Sir Isaac Newton. In other words, the works of these ancient Greek philosophers, astronomers, and mathematicians have directly informed our modern understanding of the universe. The beliefs and developments of Greek astronomy up to the time of Aristotle were spread across the Near East by Alexander the Great, who was tutored by Aristotle. And so these Greek beliefs were further worked on by other cultures. The Indian astronomer Aribahata, who lived between 476 and 550 CE, developed trigonometry, recognized that the Earth moved, and accurately calculated both lunar and solar eclipses. It must be noted that Indian astronomy was already well established by the time Alexander the Great arrived in the region, but the introduction of Greek concepts gave the Indian thinkers new insights and models to work with. What do you think might have happened if Aristarchus' heliocentric model had been accepted in his time? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my sweater, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it under the merch tab down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video.